Hi, Julie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this carousel style paper bead drying rack. Um, it's a little bit different from the first one I made. It doesn't hold as many strands of beads, but it does take up less space. Uh, it, this one here in the, mo in the picture is 18 inches tall, and this base here is about 8 inches in diameter. You don't have to use a round base. I just happened to have a block of wood that was round, and I just drilled a hole in the center of it to fit the uh, PVC pipe. Uh, the top of it has four skewers. Actually, they're dowels, eighth inch dowels. And there is an end cap at the top. And this PVC pipe is seven eighths of an inch in diameter. Um, it's actually quite easy to make and the first thing you're going to do is make a template for the little holes at the top. Bear with me one moment while I get my supplies. Here's the ruler you're going to need. A pencil. Uh, you're going to want to use a black pen. You're going to need some paper and a pair of scissors. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is take your piece of paper off of your pad and Basically what you're going to end up with is a little piece of paper that is one and a half inches wide by two and three quarters inches long. And what you want to do is you're going to divide this in half and on one side it's going to be made into a grid of 16 sections. And in those sections you're going to mark four holes down the diagonal where your holes will end up. And when you drill your holes they'll look like this. There's one, two, three, four, and then the corresponding holes on the back are one, two, three, four. So what this template will do is make it possible for you to do this spiral type of hole setup. So this is the way I did it, and it actually worked. Okay, you take your ruler, and you measure across one and, uh, two and three quarters. And you want to mark it in a couple of places. And you're going to draw a line. Okay, then you're going to go ahead and make sure that the sticky side is the side that you're doing this template on. And you're going to do one and a half inches on this side. Okay, one and a half there. and one and a half there and then you're going to draw those two lines together okay so this is since this is two and three quarters inches long you're going to find the center of that which is one and three eighths so one and three eighths there and one and three eighths here. Okay, and you're going to draw that line. Okay, what you're going to do now, since you've got one and a half inches here, you're going to need to find half of that. Only on one side. You're going to be working on only one side. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, so half of one and a half is three quarters. So three quarters, and then you want to go with three eighths also because you need half of that, and then three eighths here because that's half of that. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side three quarters, three eighths, and then over here where the three eighths and would end up being. Okay, and you're going to connect those lines. Okay, so now that I have that done, the next thing you're going to do is find the half of the one and three eighths. So half of one and three eighths, we know that that one I can't do off the top of my head, bear with me. OK, 
Okay, one and three eighths. Okay, let's see. Half inch plus, yeah, three sixteenths. Or you can go from corner to corner because eventually you're going to find center of these. Go from corner to corner and from corner to corner. Okay, basically what you're going to do is you can eyeball the centers. Find the center point on these lines, but actually the ones that you really, really want, the ones I've always been using, I'm going to color in black. So this is the one I want right there, this upper right, upper left corner, find the center of the next one, and then the center of the next one and then the center of the next one. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut this out. And you're going to cut it out this way. And then the next thing, the next step that you're going to do is you've got to transfer this to your pipe. And you're, this is just for a sample that I want to show you. And you're going to need an end cap on the end so you know precisely where to put it. Just put it on there as good as you can. And put this piece of paper that you just made right underneath the end cap so it's touching. And it goes all the way around. There will be a slight gap, but that's okay. And then you're going to want to secure this bottom and here a little bit if you want to with tape that'll be fine then you're going to take it to your drill press and you're going to drill these four holes just make sure you take the end cap off before you do that like I could take the end cap off now and you're going to put this on your drill press if you have a v-channel centering jig use that my husband actually made one for me and I left that over at the drill press, so I'm not going to bother going and getting it. But basically what you want to do is you want to put it in that V-channel centering jig and drill down straight through here, and then turn it and move it, and then drill down straight through here. You're going to go through both, both sides at the same time. Then you want to drill it and go down through this one, and then turn it and then drill down through this one. And then you'll be all done. You'll be able to take the paper off. And when you're done, it should look something like this. And essentially, your bead drying rack is, is basically done. If you don't want to do anything more than that, you can go ahead and put it in a jar of marbles or something to hold, to hold it up and put your dowels inside of it. But I went a step further and I made a stand for it, as you saw in the picture, this little stand here. Um, but one thing I wanted to demonstrate is how to clean this PVC pipe because it's got the black markings on it and it looks ugly. And what I use is pure acetone. Nail polish remover doesn't really work. Um, the, the plain stuff. This is pure acetone. It is for professional um, uh, people who work with artificial nails. But of course, I got this at Walmart. Um, you don't have to be a professional, of course, to use it. But this is what I use. And I use a paper towel. So let me prepare my surface here so I don't get it all messy and dirty. Put my piece of paper here. Okay. And I'm going, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to clean this one for you. Okay, go ahead and pour it out. I got a little too much. Got a little too excited there. But anyway, you've got you want enough so that you can just wash that right off. See, that comes right off. You can use a little bit of sandpaper if you want. 
but also when you're working with acetone it takes a layer of the plastic off with it a microscopic layer so you could actually spray some of that fusion paint on this and, and make it whatever color you want and because it will because once you clean it off it makes it so that it will paint will stick and that's how you clean that stuff okay so I'm done with that set all that aside so now you've got a clean thing okay the next thing you're going to do is you're going to prepare your base and the way I do that is you're going to need a piece of cardboard you know cereal box cardboard this one's from pizza box um, you know the store bought self-rising crust pizza yummy okay <laughs> and you're going to need some cork and I use the sheet cork this is for the very bottom it's going to cover up the hole and it, this one's contact brand uh, you can get this at Staples maybe Walmart might have it in the office department um, but it's pretty thin it's like a sixteenth of a sixteenth of an inch or so and basically what you're going to do is it's uh, it's it's of course on a roll so it's going to be kind of rolled <laughs> and what you want to do is this is the side that you want to put on the wood so you need it to turn it over and take this sticky stuff off if you want extra glue to make it stay extra better you can um, but I think it's not going to be really really necessary for me to do that in this map this case so I'm just going to go ahead and put my piece of cardboard on it and then whatever wood base you have this is when you want to go ahead and trace your design on it mine happens to be round um, but like I said earlier, this was from a previous project, so I actually had it on hand. Just go ahead and draw your circle around. And if it's not a perfect circle, you can make some register marks on your wood and on your, your um, circle. So that way you can line it up, like I put one right there. And I can erase that later. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And I'm going to use plain old Elmer's glue, the same kind of glue that I used for making my paper beads on the, the bottom of this. And uh, it'll take me just a few minutes to get this cut out. Okay. And the, um, the, the hole in here in the center... I, my husband, when he drilled it, he's actually the one that drilled it for me. He used a 7 8 inch wood paddle bit. And when I first put the PVC pipe in the hole, it, it was not um, tight fitting. And uh, that was going to be a problem. I thought I would have to figure out something else. But then I thought, well, let's try getting the wood wet with some of the adhesive so it will swell. And so, believe it or not, I use vibrance. I use a little paintbrush and I put some vibrance on the inside of it and let it dry. And that was all it needed, just one coat of that. And now it's a perfect fit. Um, if you take a look at that, it stays put. It's pretty cool. So, that's a perfect fit. And so, I've got my circle cut out. I'm going to find my register mark that I had made. Where did it? There it is. And here's the register mark on the circle. So I'm going to line them up. Okay, and I'm going to find my white glue that I had earlier today. There it is. Okay, that's all I'm going to use for it. And I'm just going to dump it on there. I do have a bigger jar. I can refill the little one. No big deal. Okay, and this is where this is going to get fun. I'm going to use my fingers. Of course, you can use anything to spread it out, credit card, whatever. And let's get this over here so I'm not messing up my white background here. Turn it over. That's even better. Okay. So if I get glue on the bottom, no big deal. Okay. Of course, I'll have to find my register mark again. But you want to make sure to completely coat the bottom of this. 
uh, with your glue so that way it'll stick completely. If you need more, you need more. Okay. Make sure it's on there good. Okay, I'm going to find my register mark again. Where did I put that? Right there. And where is it on my piece of wood? Right there. So register marks. Because I know that this circle is not perfect, so I'm putting the register marks together. Okay, and if you still have that piece of paper towel that you used, there it is. You can wipe off the excess. And you want to let this sit for about an hour or so, maybe with some heavy books on top, so it will stay put and not curl up on you. But basically, it's done. And you can assemble it. And then to store it, this is the really cool thing about this, is you can put your end caps on. And let's say that these are long skewers, or the long 12 inch thingies. You just stick them inside and put your other end cap on, just like that, and you can put it away just like that. Now I have an 18 inch length of tube that I use for mine. It's right here, I'm all done with it. And uh, it was just too big for the camera. But you get the idea, you can put your wooden dowels inside of it and just store it very easily. And then when you set it up, one thing that you're gonna wanna do is if you notice in the picture, let me grab my picture here. Okay, if you notice in the picture, I'm using binder clips and the fishing line to hold my strands of beads. And with these binder clips, I found that if you don't, um, if you don't put a binder clip up close to the um, pin, because the, the pins go through here, you need to put a binder clip on the pin itself up against the pipe and to make it stick out a half inch so it doesn't so the strand of beads won't touch the pipe. And also that makes it possible so that when you have uh, beads on two pins that are close to each other, they won't touch each other either. And I found that with the the dowels that are actually 12 inches long, I could fit up to seven strands of beads, like over here, on one pin. And uh, I put this little binder pin over here to lock it in place. And I'm also using my number beads, just like I did with my other bead drying rack that I made. And that's basically it. That's how you make this carousel style bead drying rack. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, clicking on the red subscribe button below the video. Uh, leave some comments if you have any questions. And you can go to our website at paperbeadcrafts.com to get this full size pattern instructions. And it's actually a PDF file you can download. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.